Hi everybody. Today I welcome you all for the practical session on demonstration of Mooney viscosity and stress relaxation of natural rubber. So here you can see the Mooney viscometer available in the rubber technology laboratory and using this uh, viscometer uh, basically we are going to determine the Mooney viscosity and stress relaxation properties of natural rubber. I am Ishara Vijay Singh, lecturer in rubber processing technology and Mr. Chatur Gunaratna will support me to conduct this practical session. Okay, let's start our journey. So, before going to the practical and to take the hands-on experience uh, on determining Mooney viscosity and stress relaxation of natural rubber samples, so I think uh, discussing some aspects or theories regarding this Mooney viscosity and stress relaxation is more worth. So Mooney. The term Mooney stands for the name of the founder of this viscometer. So he is the Mooney. So he found this Mooney viscometer and as a respect for him, the viscosity of natural rubber is measured in Mooney units. Here you can see the Mooney viscometer available in our laboratory that is Mooney MV2000 series the manufacturer is Alpha Technologies so from this Mooney viscometer uh, we can obtain this type of graph this type of graph so in the y-axis of this graph it gives the Mooney viscosity in Mooney units and x-axis shows the time values means the testing time so from this graph and from this region of this graph we can determine the viscosity of our rubber sample then from this part of this curve we can take the stress relaxation properties means the uncured rubber elasticity so then Mooney viscometer can be used to measure the viscosity properties viscous properties of the natural rubber as well as the elastic properties of uncured rubber okay we will see what are the factors affect the Mooney viscosity of natural rubber Actually molecular weight, molecular weight distribution of natural rubber and molecular structure of natural rubber, stereochemistry and chain branching, then non-rubber constituents, proteins, lipids, carbohydrate, metal ions etc. and finally the impurities of natural rubber. Those can affect the Mooney viscosity. Then we'll see what are the factors affect the stress relaxation properties means the elastic response of natural rubber so those are molecular weight molecular weight distribution molecular structure chain branching gel content like factors okay now we know what is the Mooney viscometer and what is the result that can be obtained from this Mooney viscometer. Okay, before moving to the theories of the Mooney viscosity and stress relaxation, so we will see what are the main parts of the Mooney viscometer that are important to measure the Mooney viscosity and stress relaxation properties of natural rubber sample. So you can see here rotor 
cavity and dies so this is the rotor which is used to measure the Mooney viscosity of rub right so there are two types of rotors small rotor and large rotor based on the requirement we can choose which rotor has to be used in determination of Mooney viscosity right for your information the hardness of this rotor is 60 HRC so these are the specifications of small rotor and large rotor so the large rotor the diameter is 38.1 plus or minus 0 0.03 millimeters in the small rotor the diameter is 30.48 plus or minus 0 0.03 millimeters the thickness of rotors is 5.54 plus or minus 0 0.03 millimeters okay here you can see the upper die so it is mobile die right so we can open the cavity by taking this upper die up and here is the lower die so it is stationary it is not movable here it makes a cavity right? so the volume of this cavity is 25 plus or minus 3 cubic centimeters this rotor rotates inside the cavity so we need to measure the Mooney viscosity of rubber so then we need to load our rubber sample to this cavity by taking up this upper die we can put our sample rubber sample here then close this upper die then rotate the rotor at a given condition then we will get the Mooney viscosity and stress relaxation curves okay so we have to fill our rubber sample to this cavity and the rotor will rotate at 2 rpm rotational speed that is a constant speed means the rotor always try to keep its rotational speed at 2 rpm revolutions per minute and the rotational rate at point to one radians per second or oh. this condition is used to measure the Mooney viscosity and stress relaxation of rubber sample loaded into this cavity so that is the basic principle behind the Mooney viscometer we load our rubber sample to the cavity then close the upper die then we will give some kind of temperature maybe 100 celsius right then we will start the Mooney viscometer means the rotor will start to rotate at 2 rpm right then it tries to keep 2 rpm always throughout the test then it will measure the Mooney viscosity and stress relaxation of rubber sample after we measuring the moon viscosity first then we can measure the stress relaxation properties of the same rubber sample to do that at the end of the moon viscosity test we need to stop the rotation of this rotor suddenly right then 
we can measure the stress relaxation properties. You can see the typical morning viscosity and the stress relaxation curve here. The y-axis of this curve gives the viscosity of the rubber in moon units. Actually speaking, the moon viscosity is measured in arbitrary values, means those values don't have an SI unit. But however, we use the these uh, values and we measure these values in moon units. Actually, the moon units is not an SI unit. The x-axis gives the time it is measured in minutes. So you can see the shape of this moon viscosity curve. Here is the moon viscosity curve and this is for the stress relaxation curve. We can perform these two tests uh, together using our Mooney viscometer. In principle, the Mooney viscosity directly proportionate to the molecular weight of rubber. If the molecular weight is high, the Mooney viscosity is high. If the molecular weight of rubber is low, then the Mooney viscosity of that rubber is also low. So that is the principle has to be kept in your mind to interpret these results. Measuring of uh, Mooney viscosity of rubber will start at the first minute. Means we give one minute time for our rubber sample to get heated. Means we put our rubber sample to the cavity which is heated up to 100 celsius from where this 100 celsius come according to the standard we perform the moon viscosity determination at 100 celsius so we have to heat our cavity to 100 celsius temperature and we need to put our rubber sample to the cavity then close the cavity then we allow our rubber sample or we permit our rubber sample to get heated up to 100 celsius so one minute time is more enough to get the rubber sample heated up to 100 celsius so that's why we give this one minute time that is technically called preheating time then what is testing time so at the first minute our sample has heated up to 100 celsius during this preheating time now the rotor will start to rotate at 2 rpm constant rotational speed so at the beginning our rubber sample has high molecular weight means it should give high moon viscosity that's why initially we can see a large viscosity number here 100, around 140 moon units because the molecular weight of our rubber is high then it will give high viscosity value means the rotor will need more torque to keep its rotational speed at 2 rpm inside the cavity right so what will happen once the rotor will rotate inside the cavity while shearing our heated rubber sample. Due to the rotation of this rotor, our rubber sample will shear, abraded. Due to that, the molecular weight of our rubber sample will reduce. Molecular weight of our rubber sample will reduce. Therefore, the moon viscosity should be reduced. That's why during this testing time period, we experience a reduction of moon viscosity. But at the end, it will come to an almost constant value. At the fifth minute, 
we will stop the Mooney viscosity test and this constant this constant value is taken as the Mooney viscosity of our rubber sample okay this point is called the initial torque so it relates to the stiffness of our rubber sample initial molecular weight of our rubber sample at the fifth minute the rotor will stop suddenly then the decaying of the torque will be recorded then the test will further run for another two to three minutes and at that time duration the viscosity values will be measured so then it will give this graph that is the stress relaxation curve of the uncured rubber material okay here you saw that the viscosity the Mooney viscosity of this example is 90 moon units so how do we express this Mooney viscosity so there are some there's a notation so here is the notation 90 uml 1 plus 400 celsius we need to give the instrument and its model so what are the things behind this notation 90 90 means the viscosity number the achieved viscosity of our rubber sample then u indicates n mass displacement M indicates for M4 Mooney. L indicates the large rotor. If we have used a small rotor, we have to use capital S there. Then this one is for the preheating time. That is the time in minutes that the specimen was permitted to warm in the machine before starting the motor and this 4 indicates the testing time that is the time in minutes after starting the motor at which the reading is taken 4 minutes time so 100 celsius is the testing temperature so if you have used we can, we can use our rubber samples, unmasked rubber samples, compound rubber samples, or mass, uh, mass rubber samples. So if we use compounded rubber samples, we have to replace this U by C. Right? And normally we use 2 RPM rotational speed of rotor to measure these properties. But if we change this rotational speed, we need to mention that speed also but normally we use 2 rpm okay now we got the stress relaxation curve after the moon viscosity test so that curve follows the power law model the stress relaxation curve follows the power law model means m equals k into t to the power a where the m is for the moon units during the stress relaxation test means stop reduction t is for the t is for relaxation time measured in seconds k is a constant equal to the torque in moon units one second after the disc or the rotor is stopped a is an exponent that determines the rate of stress relaxation basically it is the relaxation coefficient or the elastic coefficient 
so logarithmic conversion gives a linear regression equation for this power law model so if we have the Mooney viscosity or the stress relaxation the torque reduction values and the time values we can plot this graph we will achieve this type of graph and from the slope of this graph we can measure the relaxation coefficient so if we get high value for a it means elasticity of our uncured rubber is very less means our rubber is more processable we can mix fillers with our rubber very easily and we can handle our rubber very easily when we are going to produce a tie or whatever the product right so that's that means the processability right we can handle our rubber sample very easily so high a values are preferred mean due to the elasticity of uncured rubber okay this is how we measure the sample weight so we know the cavity uh, cavity's volume is 25 uh, cubic centimeters and normally density of rubber is around 0.9798 like that so using this equation we can measure what is the mass that we need to take uh, for the test so if the volume is 25 and the density of rubber or the specific gravity of rubber is 0.97 so we have to take 24 grams of rubber sample for the test now we shall see the test procedure of Mooney viscosity and stress relaxation the test method is ASTMD 1646 Zero four. Okay, we use Enterprise Online Manager software to insert our samples and to change the test variables. So this is the interface. We can go to materials, then compounds, then we can include our new compounds or the rubber samples. Here give the identifier and a brief description of your sample. Then we have to save it and this information will automatically be fed into workbench software which is used to operate our Mooney viscometer. So this is the basic interface of the workbench software we will discuss each segment later before we start the test we need to calibrate our moon viscometer if not all the things will be wrong normally the viscometer is calibrated after time its results are suspected of being inaccurate repairs before any interlaboratory test programs, before testing disputed specimens frequently enough to ensure the maintenance of proper calibration of the instrument. The calibration for torque can be done automatically using the workbench software. Okay, you can see now the calibration is progressing and now it is completed. The initial viscosity is zero now. Okay, today I have selected a crepe rubber sample which is a raw rubber type of natural rubber. As you got to know, the sample can be tested as received, means unmasked sample or as milled sample. The sample may be masked to expel air to consolidate particles or to modify it if necessary. When massing, a minimum work or shear should be done to material during sample preparation to get the best results. When NR samples are mill-massed, we have to pass 
250 plus or minus 5 grams of the sample between the rollers of the standard laboratory mill. So we have to practice D3182 method. When we practice in this, we have to maintain this temperature. The roll temperature of the mill should be 70 plus or minus 5. And the distance between two rollers means the nip size should be 2.5 plus or minus 0.1 millimeters. So we do not allow the sample to rest between passes or to band on the mill rolls at any time during this massing. So roll the sample and immediately insert it endwise into the mill for another pass. Repeat this procedure until a total 10 passes have been completed. At the end, sheet the sample on the 10th pass. Okay, then how to prepare the test sample? Okay, we have to weigh around 24 to 25 grams of massed rubber sample for the test. So this is how we fix our rubber sample to the rotor. Here it is the large rotor and after fixing these two rubber samples we have to place two polyester sheets at the bottom and top of the rubber sample to avoid the stickiness of rubber to the surfaces of the cavity of the Mooney viscometer. You can see the interface of the workbench, the loaded samples are in blue color. We have to check the pressure of the Mooney viscometer before the test. This is the switch panel, we can use it to uh, operate the Mooney viscometer. And we have to place our rubber sample in the cavity safely and we have to close the cavity then so after closing the cavity we allow one minute time to preheat the sample 200 celsius in the workbench interface we can take the test time then the viscosity value and the test temperature of the upper and lower platens and the viscosity curve and relaxation curve and the temperature curves of the platens as well as the summary of test results the progression of the test and details of the test samples so those can be directly read from this interface now time is passing and at the first minute the rotor will start to rotate then you can see viscosity curve starts to draw can see it marked the initial torque a high value now the curve is progressing now the viscosity value is getting reduced due to the reduction of molecular weight occurs due to the shearing action of the rotor now at the fifth minute the viscosity test will end and the stress relaxation test is started now you can see how the stress relaxation test is progressing so now the test is completed we can directly read the test conditions 
and the basic test results from this interface but I recommend you to go to the results of the online manager then you have to refresh it then at the top you can find your test find your test result so you can take the curves and log log plot of the stress relaxation from these results and also for further analysis you can download all the data points uh, from this online manager once you open it you will see all the test results of Mooney viscosity test and stress relaxation test and all the data points measured by the Mooney viscometer so we can use these data to plot graphs and for further analysis at the end we have to close the online manager and we have to exit from the workbench and I hope uh, you will have some time to answer these post lab questions.